Well, well, greetings gardeners. This is Coleman Alderson for GardensAll.com and today is, it's about the middle of March, coming up on it, the 13th right now, and it's a great time to be, at least in our area, Zone 7A in North Carolina, planting asparagus crowns. So we are getting excited because of this prospect. Um, a little bit about asparagus itself. This particular, this one is not one we recently harvested. This is store-bought. But um, this vegetable here has been grown for well over 2,000 years. It has a very storied history, and we think it originated out of the uh, Middle East and uh, around Europe and has been grown as a perennial vegetable for over 2,000 years. Now, it is a perennial, I mentioned that, and the reason it's such a great vegetable is because it's one of these things, once it starts, it starts growing well in your garden, you could have asparagus growing in your asparagus patch for up to 20 years, so two decades and maybe more, if you do it right, and that's what we're going to show you today, is how to get started planting asparagus and get started it, you know, going it the right way because it's real important that you plan ahead and that you supply enough nutrients and a perfect, as perfect as you can get it, soil condition that will allow it to grow for all those decades, okay? Now, I went out and went to our local hardware store that sells feed, seed, and hardware and bought a bundle. It was They were just sitting out on the counter and uh, there were 25 of these crowns and they're in a bundle. Now, these are Jersey Knights. And I'll give you a little background on that. The asparagus plant is dioecious, meaning there is a male plant and a female plant. And the female is a gorgeous plant. It, uh, it puts out these lovely fronds, kind of fern-like fronds, and then these red berries come on it, and it's, it's really, it's kind of like Christmas in the summer. But, let me tell you, that also, that energy that the female uses to produce, reproduce itself with the berries, takes away from what might be producing these lovely spears here. Now, what we do then is we go and we try to find, they, they've found that you can grow the male type species and these happen to be they're called uh, Jersey Knight okay and there are other types of all male and the males tend to put most of their energy into sending up shoots right sending up the uh, asparagus spears so that's why we're going exclusively with the uh, with this type the male plant when I start this I'll bring it down here Um, I took my bundle and we don't have a lot of space to uh, work with here. We uh, only have room for maybe a dozen max in our little garden here to plant these. And I had to pick out the ones that I thought would have the most potential for growth. And my criteria for that is to see you have several parts. You have the roots, which are going to be spread out and laid in the garden, kind of like it looks like a multi-legged multi octopus or a squid, something like that. Right here, you have the growing tip. This is a future spear that will come up out of the ground, and these are already forming, so I picked the ones out of the whole lot of 25 that really showed some growth right here on the end. My logic is that, well, if they're all ready to grow and all they they just sat in water for a couple days, that's it. And it looks like uh, they're ready to grow right now. So I picked out the best of the lot that indicated it had a growing function right here at the top. There's something that's, that's growing out already. And that's how we selected. Now, I've also gone through and found where you might find some, some dead materials on the roots that you want to cut out. Um, or a dead section that you might want to trim off. And now's a good time to do that rather than as you're going through uh, <laughs> through the whole process of having it in the ground and then deciding you're going to trim these things off. It's real handy to do this right now. And I'm just seeing areas where it's either damaged or 
you know, it's, it's for whatever reason, it's kind of wilted at the end. And just doing a little clip here and there. Here's another one right there. So we're preparing now to uh, get these guys in the ground. And in just a second, I'll show you what we're doing with the actual raised bed to prepare to receive these lovely crowns. All right, just to show you guys, this is a raised bed. It's about 14 inches to 16 inches deep. And I have filled this bed up with gorgeous material that has its own nutrients in it. And one, one of those is a just natural organic product. It's put out by the Old Castle folks. And um, we buy this at our, our local hardware store. And it's just wonderful. It has worm castings in it, has a feather meal and other things added to it. And uh, it's not a super high nitrogen. There's no real powerful fertilizer in it, but it certainly has a lot of lovely uh, organic material in it. So that's what is mostly in this bed here, along with our black cow, cow manure, which has again, just sort of marginal, um, you know, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 fertilizer in it. But it is a composted material and adds some more organic matter. And the reason we want this bed to be really prime and, and as rich as we can make it, and, and this is rich stuff, guys. This is, this is black gold right here. I also have added our own homemade compost. So we're really trying to kick in all the organic matter, the richness, the friability, making sure it's, it's, it's crumbly and that it drains well into this project because, hey, this is in the long term that we're growing. Kind of like, remember that, um, that quote from, uh, what was her name? Ah, oh, geez, it's coming to mind. Audrey Hepburn, and uh, she said, to plant a garden is to believe in tomorrow. Well, as you'll find out, to plant an asparagus garden is to believe in the next few decades, right? Because you'll be harvesting on through there. And to kick it all in, when we put these in the ground, we're gonna have to wait two years at least. That'll be the third year that we're gonna wait before we can take any harvesting. And th even that will be limited. But uh, it's, a, it's a time for patience, but it's also a time for hope, right? So uh, to plant an asparagus garden, to paraphrase, is to believe in tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. All right, let's look at what we're gonna do here. Now into this bed, I have carved a about a six inch trench and into this trench I'm going to add one more amendment. I could not find rock phosphate which is put out by Espoma at our local store but this is does contain rock phosphate and um, just very pleased to be using something it has a, a nice phosphorus content it's for bulb and flower food but I'm just going to sprinkle some of this. Remember, we're, we're planting decades of growth in here, and we want to get these plants started off just right. So I'm just sifting in a little bit of this. And then slightly just doing a little mix with the hand, a little mix. All right. So this is what we're doing here as we plant, we prepared this bed for uh, 20 years and we have all this rich, beautiful soil in here and I'll show you what we're gonna do. Here's this, uh, here's this six inch deep trench. We're gonna take our plants and lay them out nice big long one see the the shoot right there 
and press them down into the bottom here. Spread out those roots and press it down. Let me get on this side so you might see what I'm doing here. And then this one's a bit long. We're planting in a bed that's about three feet. So we can only get, if we're spacing on 12 inches, we can only get three of our asparagus crowns in here. And here's a nice lovely one here. You can see some of these are really long. I'm gonna pinch them back because they're just a little bit rangy. <laughs> and so I'm going approximately 12 inches. Setting another one in, spreading its roots out, getting the crown so that the shoot is pointed more or less straight up. And some folks like to build a little mound that they'll set the crown on and go a little extra deep on the trench, but it all works out that this turns out to be, uh, turns out to be just about right when it sets in here. So here's the third one. Planting you in here. And it has a nice little shoot coming out of it already. The, up until fairly recently, the popular convention of what to do after you set these in the ground, um, set them flat into a trench, is to cover them up just so like this, the crown, the crown's right here. I don't know that you can see it. Uh, just cover up the crown by two or three inches of soil. And then as the season progresses, like every two weeks or so, and as the plant starts to grow, then come in and put more dirt on the side. Just, you know, bring it in. But it seems now they've done some studies and it seems now it's perfectly okay to go ahead and cover the entire plant, just cover it with the full all the way up to the top and it will eventually sprout up through the soil. And that's that's my preferred mode. I'm not going to be able to come out here every every two weeks and and doctor these things by covering them up. And besides that, with rain and any snow that might come along, it's going to push this dirt over the crown anyway by several inches so it's all right to do it this way bring it in bring it in here and then i have some extra dirt from the trench in we'll just get in here generally and then spread it off so we are looking forward to having in about three years some delicious asparagus coming up out of the ground right in this spot. So the next phase will be to uh, put some mulch. We have a light bit of mulch we can apply right here. Okay. And um, you don't want to put too much, but this is just enough. And then as, as the sprouts, the shoots come up through the ground, you can bring in more mulch, and we tend to like the straw mulch. It just seems to do better. And um, it's fairly lightweight. Then we'll come back and we'll water all this in really well. And <laughs> that's the way you plant asparagus for the future and for the next three years at least before we start to harvest. But we want to get our lovely crowns off to a fantastic start and this is the way we do it now if you have any other questions or any thoughts or or comments to offer you can go up onto the youtube and offer those and also you can go onto our facebook page gardensall.com slash facebook plus you can on the youtube channel you can also subscribe to us and uh, we'd love to hear from you so this is Coleman Alderson for GardensAll.com. You all take care and happy gardening.
it's phenomenally better than uh, anything you'd buy at the store. Just, just totally, just chock full of flavor, and uh, very delicious. So that's why we we love the thought of having our own asparagus growing here, even if it's going to take a while. And so uh, maybe three years and a couple months hence, we'll be here harvesting. All that said, let's backtrack to where you pick your spot. You want about six to eight hours full sun, and you definitely want to have a place that's more or less permanent, because these guys do not transplant. They do not transplant. So once they're here, they are here, and uh, that's going to be for a generation, right? So do take a, a, a good care with where you're going to place your uh, your planting bed, and uh, you know, you'll be there for a long time. So that said, I'm going to check to make sure I've covered everything. Um, you want to make sure it's watered about one inch every week. And once the, uh, once these, these spears start appearing, the shoots start coming up, you want to come in with uh, mulch to keep some kind of mulch. And we like the, um, we just like plain old straw a good deal and just come in with the straw mulch and let it, uh, let it, uh, go on either side just to keep the moisture in the soil and keep weeds down. They do not play well with weeds. So your first few years, you're really going to have to give some TLC, uh, careful watering about one inch a week during the growing season, and then make sure that, um, the weeds aren't getting in there and, and, uh, beginning to, uh, rule over the, the asparagus. Well, that's it for GardensAll.com so far, but you know what? Why don't you guys, uh, if you have any comments or questions, just go up and post them right directly on the YouTube channel. Be glad to read them and uh, really curious about what you all are doing. If you're growing asparagus or would like to, anything pertaining to that. Plus, if you go down to on the right hand corner of the, uh, of the screen on your YouTube, you can subscribe. Also up in the top right corner, I believe there is a little bell. If you want any alerts as to far as far as anything that we're sending out that's new, we'll shoot that alert right to you if you sign up. So that's basically it. We're uh, we're excited. Spring is coming on, and we are growing asparagus. And uh, it's a long shot, but by golly, we're happy to be doing it. This is Coleman Alderson for GardensAll.com. So long.